It's time to turn your life challenging moments into life changing messages. Welcome to the Power Lift Stories Podcast, where we are interviewing women whose stories will leave you lifted up, fired up, and fueled up with hope, courage, and inspiration. We want to thank our sponsor, Powerful Journey, who helps women tell their stories, write their books, and building a profitable brand around both. Join the Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com. That is P-H-Y-L-L-I-S-J-E-N-K-I-N-S dot com. Now here's your host, Phyllis Jenkins. Hello, everyone, and excitement is in the air. Why? Because we are getting closer and closer to launching our Telling Your Stories anthology. We are super, super, super excited about it, and we have our first of many celebrations today. We are starting with author Beth Josephat, and Beth has her launch team here who are going to celebrate her, and, and um, we are super excited to have everybody. So welcome, Beth, and welcome to each of you. We're going to open this up with, most of you know, I, when I say celebrate, I have my pom pom, <laughs> so I can celebrate big time. So we are going to, I'm going to call on you today as I see you on my screen and have you to just say words of encouragement and whatever God has put on your heart to say for Beth as she is one of our uh, 14 authors in the anthology. So I'm going to start with uh, the lady, the reason that Beth is even in this world, the woman who birthed her. Miss Sheila, if you would unmute and share your words of encouragement and congratulations. If you would unmute. There okay. you are. Okay. <laughs> I, I would like to say, uh, give thanks uh, to God. Um, Elizabeth was my gift in life. Uh, and such a blessing. Uh, I learned uh, when she went off to college, I found uh, her poetry writings over the years in, in old backpacks that she had not <laughs> shared with, with me. I knew that she had been winning uh, gifts, uh, awards throughout elementary school uh, and through the years, uh, but I was just totally shocked when I found all those poems. Uh, after year after year in all those backpacks. And I, my life, it changed my life. They were so powerful. And I knew that they were a gift from God because someone that young and that age had to have been used by God to have been so powerful with her words. And um, I, I just know that she's, she's just wonderful. And I know I'm biased, <laughs> but again, just, she's, she's a wonderful gift from God. And I'm grateful that God has used her in this way. Such a blessing. Wonderful, wonderful. And Sheila, you have someone there sitting with you. And I would love for you to introduce yourself and uh, give words of encouragement as well. My name is Lamantha Richardson. And I am friends with Sheila. And I came to know Beth through Sheila. And... Um, when I was going through something really horrific in my life a couple months ago, Sheila shared with me the first book that she wrote of poems. And they inspired me, they touched me, they encouraged me. And I'm just really proud of her as a young woman to be doing this, for sharing her gift. Thank you. Thank you. And we are super excited to have you as well. And just, Beth, just as your poems in your first book uh, impacted Ms. Richardson, that's what they're going to do in the Telling Our Stories anthology as well. So we are so excited about that. Well, thank you. We will move right on to Ms. Jackie Kelly. 
Hello. Beth, I just wanted to tell you that God has blessed you with a gift that a lot of people desire. I desire to have that poem writing also, but I don't and you do. And I will encourage you to just take it as far as you can take it and bless people as you go. As you walk, then God will use it for his glory. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Jackie. Another co-author, uh, co Jackie is uh, one of the authors in the anthology, and so is our next uh, guest, who is Ms. Rhonda Rainey. And after Rhonda comes another author, Ms. Fran Richardson. Hello, Beth. Hi. I am so happy to be on this journey with you. Uh, you have inspired me already with what you've done, and I just wish you well. And I know that we are all gonna go a long way, but I know your poems are gonna touch so many. So thank you so much for sharing your gift. Thank God you. bless. Thank you, Rhonda. Fran Richardson, you're on mute, Fran. And while she's unmuting, uh, Tanisha, you will be next. So you'll know to unmute after Tanisha is Cam, and after Cam is Yolanda, so you all will know in what order to unmute. Fran is another one of our authors in the book, and we are super excited that she is here. She is um, coming off of the stage of the Miss Texas Senior Pageant and did just an outstanding job. Um, we are super, super excited to have her as part of the anthology. So while she is unmuting, we will move on. Fran, it's okay, it's okay. We will move on down to Tanisha and Fran, we'll come back. We'll come back to you. So Tanisha. Can you guys hear me? Yes. We can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Are you back on mute now? <laughs> Tanisha, you're on mute. Okay, while Tanisha's taking care of that, because we're this is on a podcast and we, we are being, uh, we want to keep on going. Cam, would you unmute and uh, share, please? Beth, I am so proud of you. I have a copy of your first book of poems, which blessed me. And I actually pick it, picked it up probably a couple of weeks ago and read one. Um, your poems will inspire people and will change people's lives uh, for the glory of God. I am just so proud of you and just, just so honored to even know you. Thank you. Oh, that's sweet. Miss Yolanda, if you would unmute, please. Hello, ladies. I you went, am. You went off camera, Yolanda. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Here you Can are. You? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Can you hear me? We hear yep. you and we see okay. you. I am so proud of Beth. And like Cam said, I still do have her first book of, um, of poems and love each and every one of them. Oh, yeah. She has been a wonderful hey, friend. Yolanda. And I am so grateful for her and for everything, everything that she's been in my life. Oh, thank you. All right. Now, Fran, we see that you are ready. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being patient with me. You know, I have glaucoma, so I have a visual problem. And We're I so have... happy you're here. Yes, I am. I am too. But I want to say to Beth, all of you, you girls are great. I wish her the best of luck. Go on. Push on. Don't let stop because you're stepping out on faith as I did when first pageant. But you've got it. It's there for you to do it. And let's go. I I, I congratulate you very Thank much. You. Appreciate the it. The beautiful. Yes, yes. Everything is so wonderful. Thank you. That is great. And last but finally not least, 
Miss Tanisha, we see you. And if you would unmute. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> we can. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just want to say congratulations to Beth. I'm very excited for you with this uh, new book coming out. I'm also very excited to hear the testimonies that'll be coming from the different women that your poems will be touching. I just knew that, um, you know, from the first time I met you in college, that you were really gifted. And I just always appreciated that you were able to put words on paper that way. Um, everybody's not uh, gifted that way. And I just always love receiving your points as gifts or presents and just just because, you know, you felt something and you wanted to express it and you wanted to share that. So we just really appreciate you. We love you and we're just praying for you. And we know that this is going to do great things for not only you, but other women as well. So congratulations. Amen. Thank you. Well, we are so excited about each of you being a part of the um, the celebration today for Beth, and I'm going to ask everyone to mute except Beth, and Beth, let's just move right into the interview right now. Um, I'm going to just share a few words about you, and then I'll let you add on from there. Beth is a Dallas native. She has a passion for serving God's people, and she is driven by uh, her love for art and science, and she is a poet and a writer, and she works as an engineering uh, professional. She is the author of her first book, which is entitled Reconciled, Inspirational Poems for Life. And as you've heard on here today, it has already impacted the lives of others. And so we are Truly excited to have you share in the Telling Our Stories anthology, Beth, and where you are sharing more of your poems. So let's uh, move right into our interview. If there's anything else you'd like to share about you that I left off, and um, well, I did leave off. You're married of uh, 12 <laughs> years, and you have two fascinating and beautiful children who keep you focused and grounded, and they will do that, right? <laughs> Love that. What else would you like to share, Beth? Oh, I think you covered it, so. Okay, okay. great, <laughs> great. Well, let's just move right into the interview with our first question being, uh, we know that you have powerful poems that are part of the anthology, and so I would like for you to share what is your why for writing the poem? Okay, what is my why? Well, uh, that's very important to me. I feel like we all have a story. We all have trials and situations that have affected us, have impacted us. And a lot of times when we don't share that, we sit in darkness, we sit in isolation, alone and unhealed and hurting. And so I feel like it's so important for us to um, receive healing by confessing those things, by sharing those things with others. Um, the word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by um, the word of our testimony. So we have to overcome by, by sharing those things. And the root of it is we are not experiencing those things just uh, for us or for our benefit. We're actually going through those things for other people to learn and to, to grow from those situations. So that's a big part of my why. <clears throat> Um, if we just start talking about, you know, what uh, precipitated some of the, the poetry and, and just my need to journal, we can go back to my, my formative years. So <laughs> I'm going to take you back on a little bit of a journey here. But I started um, just going through some, I guess, rejection, um, a lot of continuous bullying, probably in elementary through, through middle school. So in elementary, I probably was, you know, an outcast. I probably was usually the only black and the only fe uh, black female in my class. I was pretty quiet then as I am now. I'm still an introvert pretty much. Um, you know, made good grades, kept to myself, but you know, that was a target. I had a target on my back, I guess. Um, as I progressed into middle school, it just really got, um, I guess it was more fuel added to that the whole rejection thing. So it became more of a, um, I would say a physical safety issue. 
I began to try to stand up for myself. And in doing that, it kind of, you know, it made it worse, basically. It made the situations worse. And a lot of times my physical safety was threatened to the point where my mom actually had to take me out of school sometimes. So um, that was very pivotal. That was very impactful to me. But still, I did not, I, I didn't linger in that because I had the poetry, because I had writing and I was able to journal. And I didn't know it at the time, but God was speaking to me through that poetry. Um, I wasn't sharing it with anybody, you know, for the most part at that time, but he definitely was using that and would use that in the future. Um, you know, I had a relationship when I, you know, when I thought I could at, at that point, I grew up in church, um, was baptized at eight. And I remember the turning point being when I left middle school, because of course I dreaded uh, going through some of the same situations uh, as I moved into high school, but thankfully that that situation turned around. I actually transitioned into a private school in ninth grade. And we had chapel. I remember us going into worship and just having chapel and God just speaking to me. And I was able to rededicate my life at that point. I was able to really connect and understand what that relationship looked like. And I began to, I guess my poetry, I would say, began to transform into more of a um, spiritual and inspirational um, pastime for me. Um, in addition to some of the things I experienced in school and in that setting, I also felt pretty isolated as a child. I, I grew up, as my mom stated, I was her only child, but I also had um, family, media family that I was not in contact with because of a lot of the, the generational unforgiveness um, and um, the hurts and wounds that had kind of festered uh, between my parents and their generation. I felt the effects of that um, as I was not able to have relationships with, you know, even uh, I would say my grandmother and aunts and uncles and cousins. And I think at that time, I didn't really understand it. I would, you know, kind of see people um, during the holidays, I would see family friends gathering with their family and not really understanding what that felt like. But knowing that I missed that, that connection, right? And I also had a half brother that I always knew about, but never really reached out to. And so I started to, to feel his uh, desire to reach out to him at some point. Um, as I transitioned to college, I, like I said, I began writing and, and continuing to um, just develop my poetry, but I really understood who God was at that point, who, um, who his word said he was. I hadn't been grounded in the word and I had that foundation laid as I began to participate in one of the student ministries. Um, I was able at some point to start to reach out to my brother and um, along that same line, I realized I did have a broken relationship with my father. And we know how foundational our relationships are with our, our parents and how that shapes who we become and how we deal with people and things like that. Um, I remember having a, a friend have a conversation in my dorm room with her father. She was on the phone with her father and they were just having a, a nice flowing conversation. They had a really good rapport. I remember thinking to myself, wow, I don't have that type of relationship with my father. And I just really began to pray to God to show me how to begin healing that relationship. And, you know, it was both sides because he felt that same hurt and disconnectedness with his family, with his parents. And uh, I just started to understand then that, you know, that generational thing, it's real. It goes from generation to generation. If you don't purposely seek God to heal and to break those things, they're going to continue. And so I'm um, that. Oh, we also, just, it, it's amazing. I'm sitting here listening to you, Beth. And uh, of course, I've heard your story before, but hearing it even again just shows how God protected you and used mm -hmm. you at an early, early age, uh, turning the, um, the bullying and, and uh, you turned it around and used it um, by writing, um, yeah. ex expressing yourself through writing. And now look at us, we are benefiting from mm -hmm. all of the writings that you've done. Um, what would you say right now to, to someone who, who is 
walking in the same shoes that you walked mm-hmm. in as a child and not knowing uh, what to do about it, what would you say? What advice would you give to that young person? I would tell them to cry out to God. That's, that's the only way you're going to get through it. Mm-hmm. We know that he's always, his presence is always with us. We know that even if we don't feel him, he's there. Okay? He's put certain things and certain uh, talents and gifts in us. He's given us the ability to overcome. And we have to continue to seek him. I know at a young age, it's hard to, to probably fully grasp that. But, um, you know, hopefully parents and somebody are praying for that person, you know, seeing them through. Because I know that's what got me through the prayers of my mom and, and other people in our community. And really just... Like I said, understanding how we need to connect to Christ because ultimately he's going to heal us and we need to confess, first of all, our sins and then also um, go to him for healing of those situations, those trials that really um, seek to, to destroy us. And there's only power in him in his resurrection. So absolutely, that's absolutely. Great advice. Great advice. As we are beginning to bring our interview to a close. I have only two more questions. And uh, the next one is what one thing would you want the readers to walk away with after they've read your poems that are in the anthology? What's one main thing that you would want them to walk away with? I want them to know that no matter how much pain they've experienced, um, no matter what they've gone through, there's still light. There's still Um, hope. God can shine his light, his truth on that situation, but you have to confess what has happened to you. You have to share your story. Um, You can't sit in isolation and expect to um, just have those feelings and those situations be buried because then they manifest in ways that are not helpful and will ultimately seek to harm you. So I just want everybody to share their story, no matter how small or how insignificant they feel it might be. So like I said, we all have a testimony. We all have something to share and a gift to share. And that that's another big part of it. God has put gifts and talents in every one of us, regardless of what we feel or think about them. He wants to use them for his glory. Amen. Amen. And uh, for those of you who have, who have attended our conferences, Powerful Journey Women's Conferences, you know that our theme is my story for God's glory. And Uh, Beth is so, so right. We all have a story. We have a story to tell. And that story is not for us. That story is for us to share and to be a blessing to others. Uh, Your lessons learned, your story becomes an arsenal in somebody else's survival kit. And it, it, it comes down and it lets them know that they're not alone. So many times people think that they're the only ones that are going through Uh, that particular situation, but your story, your truth, your lessons learned comes out and it lets them know that they're not alone and it gives them hope. It gives them inspiration. It gives them encouragement that what God has done for you, it will do for them as well. Beth, I would like to close by asking you to share your powerful journey anthology experience. Uh, We have truly built a sisterhood here and uh, just share your experience. Okay. So I first met Phyllis last year and I knew she had a podcast and a a business or a ministry called The Powerful Journey. And she was just starting her inaugural class, her master class for people who were either trying trying to start their ministry or their business to really just to gain um, some knowledge on some foundational things as far as running your business or your your own ministry. And so I was able to participate in that class and that really helped me because I need need some motivation. I need some extra help sometimes to to stay focused. And I had not been sharing any of my poetry at that point. I actually have tons of books that I'm just sitting on that I haven't um, been marketing because to me, marketing is overwhelming, but um, her masterclass has gone through a lot of different aspects of, of marketing. Um, she breaks it down to um, how you start to build up your, your base and how you can get the word out. So um, the masterclass has been very impactful in helping me, but it also um, it surrounds you with a group of motivational women, women who also have the same goals, who also want to do some of the same things. 
And that has been really helpful in just moving me forward in some of my business goals. So I would definitely recommend that master class. And she has many other um, classes she offers under her ministry. So I'll definitely check that out if you have something on your heart that you've been kind of sitting on. Well, thank you, Beth. And we have, have certainly enjoyed having you in it. That was the water walking masterclass. And let me tell you, these ladies have walked away, walking on water with their gifts, their, their ministries, their businesses, their brands. And uh, it truly was a powerful journey with each of those ladies. And the anthology as well has, has just been absolutely wonderful. And uh, the ladies we got to, uh, to meet face-to-face a few, well, last month now, last month, and we had our photo shoot, and it was just wonderful to see the camaraderie among each of the, the authors and the meeting for the first time. So as we close today's podcast, just let me say that this book, Telling Our Stories Anthology, Volume 1, will launch on November 20th. And you will be able to get more information by going to tellingourstories.info, tellingourstories.info. And perhaps you are ready to tell your story. We are now taking names. We have a waiting list for our Telling Our Stories Volume 2 which will begin, um, our classes will begin in December, 2021. So we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, Thank each of you again for coming today and celebrating with Beth and um, for our podcast audience. Thank you. We will have many more authors coming uh, in the next few weeks. So stay tuned. You will get to meet each of the authors, hear their stories, their whys. And, and you will be invited as well to our big launch celebration, November 20th. So we are excited that, uh, that you will be joining us and you will hear more and more about it over the next few weeks. So thank everyone on here again for coming and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us today. If you are interested in being on the show, go to phyllisjenkins.com. You can also sign up for the Powerful Journey Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com.